Good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great night and looking forward to a great day. Like I said, we have a three-peat of birthdays today. Today is Karen Brokaw's birthday, it's Lizzie Westfall's birthday, and it's Brian Westfall's birthday. So happy birthday to Karen, Lizzie, and Brian. I hope you all have wonderful birthdays today. Uh, today's Lizzie's 20th birthday. That's a milestone. Wow, Lizzie. Can't believe that you're 20. Hope you have a wonderful day celebrating that. Um, <laughs> the cat photo of the day is called Business Time. And it says, tired of endlessly scooping and emptying the litter box? <coughs> You might consider toilet training your cat. Though it may seem far-fetched, there are a couple of books and a growing number of kits on the market that walk owners through the multi-step process, which can last anywhere from 21 days to several months, of placing litter-filled inserts into toilet bowls and gradually widening the hole in the insert until the debris drops straight into the toilet bowl. Be prepared to lavish plenty of positive reinforcement by way of treats and praise and have some patience for the occasional accident not to mention their failure to flush. So this is Nadia, and Nadia lives in the Kansas City area in Liberty, Missouri. What a pretty torty. Pretty, pretty girl. Okay, so we've got Psalm 104, um, verses 24 to 34 and 35b. And it says, May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I love it when the psalm includes the natural world. Mentions of trees, bodies of water, types of land, animals, and the stars delight me. Psalm 104 is full of this kind of rich imagery. God is extolled for having wisdom and making creatures that can live in all kinds of environments on our planet, with a close look at this section in the ocean in particular. Our attention is called to how the ocean is full of life, from the smallest animals to the biggest. The psalmist marvels at the ways the creatures occupy this unique ecosystem below the water and how people make use of the surface above to sail ships. We are reminded how God has made cycles and seasons for food, making life continuously possible. This is not, however, a list of species as amazing as such lists are, nor is this a textbook lesson about the water cycle. This is a poem for rejoicing in which the psalmist gives God a blessing as well, calling God to rejoice in the natural world right alongside of us. Let us pray. God, help us to notice the beauty in, our, in your world that is around us today. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Um, the world around us is truly an amazing place. And um, maybe, well, it doesn't even matter where you are. Because I was going to say, you know, it's mountains feel more majestic, perhaps, especially if you live in the plains or the Midwest. Um but it could be that if you see mountains and trees all the time, you may see a certain majesty in the plains and the, the wide openness of the sky that's here. That's, that's what continues to awe me about living in the Midwest is the, the wide openness of, of the sky. Uh, we we uh, were out driving in the country the other day when we were looking at the Northern Lights and uh, just amazed at how wide the sky is. That uh, when you get away from the city and you get away from the trees and you get away from the skyscrapers and, and that sort of thing, there's an awful lot of sky to be seen. And it's, it's very, very big and it's very, very broad. And to be able to look from one horizon to the other, um, it's, uh, it just made me feel very, very small. And as we were looking at the the Northern Lights, that, uh, you know, Psalm 8 came to mind, is that who is the human being that you are mindful of them? Uh, and yet we are made just a little lower than the angels. Um, just truly extraordinary, um, um, beautiful, uh, 
the beautiful imagery that that is there and you know we also tend to put ourselves above creation um and god says we are at the pinnacle i mean there's a, or maybe we infer that because the human beings were made on the the sixth day so it's inferred that we are the pinnacle of creation and it's all god also says that we are to be caregivers to to creation we are to steward it steward it and manage it um and so that being said we are at the top of the food chain but maybe that's where i should have said that being said even if we are at the food top of the food chain it doesn't mean that we're just, we're not part of creation because we are part of creation we we are created too and we are created in god's beautiful image and um and all of us, trees, flowers, grass, birds, animals, human beings, all of us should praise God and give God thanks and rejoice in this gift of creation, just as God rejoices right along with us. That's beautiful. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. Do what you can to bring some love and light into the world. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it so much. Have a great day, a great weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday.